The statistics coming into this game at Twickenham could hardly have been more contrasting. England on a national record run of 16 consecutive wins compared to Italy's nine consecutive RBS Six Nations defeats. A win in this game would be the English side's tenth win in a row in the championship, which would equal the tournament record. In the early stages of the match, England struggled to dominate. After a scoreless opening quarter, the English eventually gave the scoreboard operator some work to do. Having passed up on the opportunity to kick at the posts from the line-out, England drove towards the Italian try-line. They had too much momentum for the Italians to be able to hold them up. And referee Roman Poitre was certain that he'd seen Dan Cole ground the ball amidst the forest of bodies for an important opening try of the match. Owen Farrell earning his 50th cap missed a kickable conversion, so the lead was 5-0. Italy's tactic of not contesting the breakdown allowed players stand in what would normally be offside positions. It seemed to flummox the English, who didn't seem quite sure how to cope. What do we need to do for it to be rough? I, I can't say it. I am the referee, I'm not the coach. This was a much improved Italian performance, and Conor O'Shea's men got their first points on the board in the 33rd minute. Having missed two penalties earlier, out half Tommaso Allen kicked a confident drop goal, having been given time to measure his efforts. England 5, Italy 3, an unlikely scoreline, 33 minutes on the clock. And as England continued to struggle with Italy's unconventional yeah, tactics, Yazuri's confidence grew. Well, no, we just wanted to know what the rule was, what, what the exact rule is. If there's no rug, there, there is just a... An area around the tackle on yeah. the ground, yeah. making, making an offside line, and that's it. The Italians were awarded a 39th minute penalty, giving Allen a chance to give the visitors a half time lead. His start. kick struck the upright, but Gio Benditi was quickest to react, and he had the strength to get over the line for the try. It rounded off a quite extraordinary first 40 minutes. And Allen added the extras to leave it England 5, Italy 10 at the break well might coach O'Shea celebrate Italy perhaps stung by criticisms of their performances to date were producing their best display of the campaign but they were rocked back early in the second half Danny Kerr caught the Italians napping with a quick tap and go and he slipped through the tacklers and over the line to level the scores the Harlequin scrum half did really well to find the gap Farrell was off target with the conversion, but it was 10 points apiece. England with the perfect start to the second half. With that momentum, Eddie Jones' side pressed home their advantage a couple of minutes later. A lovely, incisive passing move ended with Ben Teo passing to Elliot Daly, who charged over on the wing for England's third try. Daly had scored the all-important winning try against Wales last time, what winger's score put England back in front. This time Farrell converted and it was 17-10. The Italians didn't crumble under the pressure and on the hour they pulled themselves right back into the contest. Exeter centre Michele Campagnaro showed the strength and deft footwork to evade the English tacklers and force himself over the try line for Italy's second try of the match. Defensively England will feel that they might have done better but Campagnaro deserves great credit. Padovani kicks the conversion, but it slid wide to leave England narrowly in front, 17 points to 15. With just under 15 minutes to go, England once more came close to securing the four-try bonus when they won a scrum against the head, and when Ben Youngs kicked to the corner, substitute Carlo Canna came from nowhere to save his side with a wonderful intervention as Daly had looked set to touch down. Great pace from Canna to get back, but very close for England. And it wasn't long before the fourth try arrived. This was the killer blow with ten minutes remaining. England had the Italians scrambling in defence, and when the ball was worked wide to Noel, he had time to slide over for the score. The man from Truro's 10th international try, and although Farrell missed the conversion, 
England had a little breathing space, a 22 points to 15 lead. With the Italian spirit weakening, England hammered home their advantage, and after a super line break from Kyle Sinclair, the Italians didn't have time to reorganise before the ball was spread out to Ben Teo, who could celebrate a try on his first start for England. Teo adding to the try he scored against France on match day one. Farrell converted this score, it was 29-15, and Eddie Jones' men were out of sight. There was still time for a final score for the home side after a brave effort from Italy. England moved to within just one win of equaling New Zealand's record run of 18 victories. Some good work from Farrell in the build-up before Noel forced his way over the line for his second try of the game. Farrell converted to leave a final score of England 36, Italy 15. England's record unbeaten run under Eddie Jones continues. And they top the table going into the game at home to Scotland next. It was much improved from Italy, who take great heart as they host France in Rome in two weeks' time. Final score at Twickenham, England 36, Italy 15.